Another day, another frame. Today we're taking a look at this Team Nugent frame. This is called the Large Boss. It's also available in a Medium Boss, which I have right here. And the big difference between the large and the medium is that this top plate and the bottom plate here are a little bit smaller. So let's get this medium out, we'll take a look at it, and then we'll talk about the frame and how they actually built it to be able to withstand a lot more crashes than a normal frame. <laughs> So here are the pieces that are included. Basically you have your bottom plate, your top plate, your forearms, and then screws and uh, lock nuts to hold it together. Also you have your spacers and these little mounts. Now these mounts look pretty familiar. The, they mount into the side of your run cam uh, micro. And this piece is for an antenna mount where you would have an extension cord from your uh, antenna come up through here and it pushes through and then you could mount your antenna to this and this would mount to the rear post on the back of the quad. So that's good. Now it comes with uh, four sets of screws. It comes with small ones that hold the top plate on. It comes with medium ones and another set of medium ones and these are designed to hold on each of the arms. The longer ones go through the main plate into the spacers, into the arms. And then it comes with these extra long screws and I believe these are included so that you can use these to mount your flight board and your ESC to it. That way when you crash it will be a lot stronger and hold together and not have all your electronics spill out and have to do a lot of fixing that way. So when you put this together, this is how you want to do it. You want to put the medium screw here, or the second smallest, and then you also want to get your 12 millimeter screws and run them up through the uh, inner hole, and that will give it a lot of strength to uh, hold on to the spacer. Some of these screws may be a little tight going through these holes, but you actually want that to happen because that means that the screw itself will have a lot less chance of being wobbly at all through here. So then this thing, slides on top of here and then we put the spacer up on the longer screw and see you have a lot of thread going into the spacer and that's going to provide a lot more strength into the spacer and to give it a lot less likely chance of bending over and uh, ripping this spacer out of the screw when it's and you're in a bad crash there that's how it looks I need to tighten these up but also you'll notice here, this is where the flight board goes and it supports a 30.5 millimeter spa hole spacing and they're not part of the uh, spacers. Now if you look at other frames like the b fight, the b fight has two screws that hold the arms in. One goes into a spacer, one goes up here and I put this little lock nut on here or this little whatever you call it, kind of washer. Put that on there with a little bit of thread sticking out so you can put the spacer on there and mount your flight board on top of that. Now the bad thing about this is vibrations from this go straight down into those screws and right into your flight board. Now, so here's the medium boss fully assembled. Like I said, it comes with these long screws and these screws are designed, I believe, to go up through the bottom plate and then to your ESC and your flight board to give them a lot of strength in the crashes. That way, when you do crash, you shouldn't be able to break much. At least it won't be able to come apart. So these screws here are, uh, I think they're, let's see, I was figured out are about 20 millimeter screws. So, uh, there we go, yeah, pretty close. About 20 millimeter screws, so you have a lot of threads that are coming up through the fly, uh, through the main plate here. And this main plate down below is three millimeters thick, which is ginormous for a main plate. And this top one is two and a half millimeters thick, and these arms should be four millimeters. Yeah, and they're four millimeters arms. Now the default for this uh, quad will actually be five millimeter arms, And they add about six grams of weight between all four of them because if you look at this, there's really not a lot of length to this arm. So adding another millimeter of depth to it is not gonna add a lot of weight either. So with this being 20 millimeters and the main plate being three, you got about 17 millimeters of space up above the thread or up above the body there to attach your flight board and ESC to. The overall length of the upper plate of the long boss is about 88.3, 88.4 millimeters. The overall length of the medium boss comes in, whoa, just a little bit over 80 millimeters, about 80.5 millimeters. So it's a little bit shorter. The motor to motor length on the long boss comes in about just shy of 220, maybe about 219 or so. The medium boss comes in about 215, so you're actually saving about 5 millimeters of length. On this long boss frame, the left to right length between motors is about 138 millimeters or so. And the front to back it comes out to be about 173 millimeters or so from on the long boss frame. 
On the medium boss frame, the left to right motor spacing is about 133, and the front to back comes in about 168. At the beginning of the video, we were looking at the long boss frame, and we just put together the medium boss frame. And at first glance, they don't really look that much different. But if you put them up here top to top like this, you can see the medium body frame, it really is a few millimeters shorter. Now the advantage of that is you're going to lose a little bit of weight, but how much weight? Let's find out. The frame I've been flying with is this B-Fight 210, and so just to give a little bit of baseline, we'll start with it so we have something to compare the weights of the other one to. So this one comes in at 62.7 grams, and that's the B-Fight. So if I take the long body, or the large frame here from Nugent, it comes in about 62 grams, so it's just a little less than the B-Fight. If we take the medium frame, which this one has the same thickness of arms, the only difference is the main carbon fiber plates there. And this one breaks down to 62 or 61.2. So whether you go with the medium or the long on a weight difference really isn't going to make that big of a difference in your overall weight of your quad. Now if you, like I said before, if you start using the default 6 millimeter arms, you can add about 6 grams to this and that's about where you'll come in. And the advantage of 6 millimeter arms is they're going to be a heck of a lot harder to break than 5 millimeter arms. Not impossible, but definitely a lot more uh, strength than those than, than these have. Over here on the left is a long boss, and over here is the medium boss. This is a 5-inch propeller, and if I center it over the hole, you can see it's easily going to clear the frame. It's not gonna, it has it by about 4 or 5 millimeters between the arm and the post, where it should be able to spin just fine. Over here on the medium frame, it's the same thing, because the arms are the same length and <laughs> they're the same, so it should be fine. Also here on the medium body, my first question was, are the blades gonna to touch in the middle? And the answer is gonna be no, because here they are, here it is centered, and it is not going across the center line. And I'll grab another prop. And here's the other prop, and you can see the easily don't touch. Just kidding, that's only a four inch. Here's the other five inch prop. If I put this on here and center it up over the motor hole, you can see they still have enough gap that they shouldn't have any kind of clicking or touching when they're spinning around. With the options that are offered by these two frames, it makes frames like the B-Fight a little bit harder to swallow. There's not a lot of room inside here for anything other than the flight board. Of course, you do have this out here, but it doesn't provide a lot of protection, not being inside the frame. It does have little side posts that I don't have installed, so that does give a little bit more rigidity up here in the front, but I did manage to break this little piece off on my racing quad. Right there it's supposed to be. But, and also this top plate being as thin as it is, you can tell it's kind of cracked right there from a previous flight that I did because I broke off my shark fin. But anyway, so the nice thing, like I said before about these frames, they give you a little bit more room inside here between the flight board and the front for your camera to mount, which gives a lot more protection for your camera. And it should be an overall stronger frame because of the thicker plates up on the top and the bottom. And the way the arms are mounting on here, it should be plenty strong as well, especially if you're getting the five millimeter thick arms. So which of these frames would I recommend over the other? Well, the one I'm actually going to be building out is going to be this large uh, boss, the large boss. The only reason I'm going to be picking this one is because I like the idea of having a little bit of extra room up here in the front. And <laughs> that's about it. That's the only thing I got. This medium one would be okay. And in fact, I might even change my mind later. I'm not sure. But this one would be okay. If you're trying to go for the most, the very lightest quad you can, this medium one with the four millimeter arms would be better. You're gonna save just a gram or two having the smaller main plates, and you're gonna save about six grams going with the four millimeter over the five. But when I crash and my arm breaks with four millimeter, at that time I will be thinking, I wish I'd got five millimeter arms. <laughs> but anyway, the extra arms are available, and uh, these frames are available. I'll have product uh, links to this down in the about part of this video and subscribe so you can see the build video come up later. Actually, it'll probably be a build review video. But if subscribe so you can see it, and I'll do, show some flight footage of this. And if, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can. And as always, thanks for watching.